Welcome back, everyone. Pal Ponder All Weather here. Hope when I went out there enjoyed their weekend. We're going to be tracking a powerful storm system that's going to be developing, dumping a heavy rain and several rounds of severe storms as this moves across the country. So let's take a look at the overall 500 millibar setup this morning on the North American view. You can actually see the big picture where most of the country is actually experiencing well below average temperatures this morning for your first official day of spring. It doesn't actually feel like that in a lot of these areas, but the big event is just now starting to come into fruition down here. This is gonna be another developing low pressure center that's coming diving down off the Aleutian Islands, tapping into some of this warmer sea surface temperature anomalies down here off uh, coming off of Hawaii. And that is gonna be setting the stage for another significant event that's gonna be coming in across the West Coast. But this morning, it's all about the chill and it's the winter chill out there that just won't let go. But that, I think this is the last day of it, especially for a good part of the South. So this morning you are experiencing those freezing conditions all the way into some of these areas and even into the coastal regions. But out west, we already ha have several wind advisories and high wind warnings in place, uh, getting you know ahead of this main system. So down here in Southern California and portions of Arizona, they could be actually experiencing 60 to 65 mile per hour wind gust as this storm comes ashore. But we've got isolated pockets of flash flood watches because we are expecting some heavier rains. And then the Sierra Nevadas are gonna get crushed with more heavy snow compounding to a lot of these areas that are gonna be upwards to almost 60 feet of snow they've seen so far this season. It doesn't really have no end in sight as well. But let's take a look at the overall water vapor transport index so this as we get into your tuesday afternoon it's pretty significant it pulls in a lot of you know from those higher sea surface anomalies down here in hawaii pull is in that abundance of water vapor in that mid-latitude atmosphere and yet we have another pretty significant heavy rain event that's going to be coming across in the portions of the west coast especially into california more importantly southern california and this will actually move across into the four corners regions getting into arizona that's why they've got the flash flood watches in place with more heavy rain for them and as the winds turn around the moisture levels start to come back the dew points start to surge up here into the southern plains as well and that's just going getting into the day on tuesday and being more amplified as we go into wednesday and thursday but here's the winds coming in off the west coast as we go into tuesday afternoon some of these wind gusts could easily be gusting 50 miles an hour upwards to possibly 60 miles per hour at times so very heavy winds as this system will be coming ashore and it doesn't stop just in California, it continues to cross in a good part of Arizona, especially into portions of New Mexico as well. And then you'll also be windy in portions of the Southern Plains. So I'm not expecting too significant, but let, yeah, a lot of these wind gusts could easily be 30, possibly 40 miles an hour at times as things have turned around with that south wind. South wind's a much warmer wind. So if you are new to the channel and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and you're in. You get all my daily content on this channel. And you're in the market for a weather station. I highly recommend the Tempest Weatherflow weather station. I feel like it's the best one on the market. And it's the one I've actually had myself for three years, and it's all solar. The cool thing about it is it only takes like 10 minutes to install, and it's got this convenient app as well, and it does pretty much everything. <laughs> and if you'd like to purchase one of these, I do have a discount code. You can actually get 10% off and free shipping at checkout. So you can actually, here's the link, but I'll put it in the description below so you can click on it and possibly order one for yourself. So let's take a look at the setup for your rain amounts as we head into your Tuesday afternoon. They already, in fact, have those slight risks for excessive rainfall really inundating along the coast into Central uh, California, especially into Southern California, those places into Santa Barbara, back into portions of, you know, getting into Los Angeles, down here into San Diego. But they also have heavier rains that could impart uh, portions of Central Arizona. 
as well. And that's why they've got some of those flash flood watches in place. So let's take a look at the overall setup for the next 48 hours. So as this system comes ashore, this is not a radar depiction. It just shows you with these orange shaded areas of the heavier rains, of the more intense rains as these comes across. These areas in green, that's just basically very, very light rain possibly in these areas. Some of this might not even be reaching the ground, but some of these areas in the or you know, you know, in the yellow shaded area, that is your little bit more light, you know, heavier, lighter rain and a little bit more moderate rain coming in. But the, yeah, the main event is going to be coming ac coming ashore over the next 36 to 48 hours across a good part of the West Coast. So let's take a look at some of these rain amounts that could unfold between now and Wednesday morning up here into San Jose, about a half inch, could be a little bit more than that along the coast coastline here. But further south, back into Santa Maria, you know, one to two inches of rainfall back into Oxnard. Again, a couple of inches of rain. Los Angeles, more three more inches of rain on top of what you've seen so much over the last four months. It's just been incredible how much water it's going to be inundating across the West Coast. And this is another significant you know system that's come that's coming ashore and this is this is why they've got some of the you know widespread flash flood watches in place and some of those heavier rains and that could extend all the way down into oceanside down into san diego with a, with a couple of inches of, of, of rainfall but even inland as well where they do need it even more back into las vegas uh you know all the way into portions of Arizona. And it doesn't stop there because that continues into Arizona. Prescott could be picking up three inches of precipitation as well as into Flagstaff. Most of that's going to be in the form of snow, but even Phoenix could pick up at least a half inch of rainfall from this system, you know, as this system continues to, to move across into the east. So as it does, it's going to be tapping into some of those south, south winds, and that south wind is a warm wind, and that pulls in those above average sea surface anomalies in the Gulf of Mexico. And as the as that happens, the ch the change in the dynamics where it's really kind of drier air right now will really start to change as we go into your Wednesday with, with widespread 65, you know, middle 60s for dew points surging all the way into a good part of Texas as well as into Oklahoma, and that reaches all the way into Missouri, could as reach far north as portions of central uh, Illinois back into the mid 50s dew points that change in the dynamics and could set the stage for more severe weather especially as we get into wednesday really the main events thursday and friday so here's the setup this is why they've got those winter weather advisories in place in portions of northern minnesota where they're expecting a couple more inches of snowfall from this particular system you know it, from tuesday into tuesday night time frame and further south, we could have a little bit of instability. Right now, they do have a marginal risk in place. I do feel this could actually easily be bumped up to a slight risk as this gets a little bit closer into your Wednesday afternoon. But nonetheless, we're going to be looking at for stronger thunderstorms into portions of Kansas City here and this area and portions of, of Missouri. But, you know, as, as you're going to be just basically right where that low pressure center is, and just to the north of there, that's where the snow is going to be flying. But it's all about the t the warm sector and further south as the temperatures continue to surge. As we get into Wednesday, it's a rapid change of what you're experiencing right now. So those temperatures are really going to be elevated. A lot of these areas down here in Texas are going to be in the 80s coming up on your day on Wednesday. And that higher t uh, temperature anomalies surge uh, as as uh, with this trough really starts to dig in out west and those well below average temperatures will continue to remain out west while much of the central and eastern two-thirds of the u.s will be beginning to warm up so but here's the significant event that's heading into your thursday afternoon as this amplified trough will be really digging down here into the baja california and as it does, it's going to be tapping into this warm sector, and we've got a pretty significant low-level jet that we've got to be concerned about. So we could have more severe storms breaking out into West Texas and into the Oklahoma area. They've got a day four risk out already in a good part of Oklahoma City, out into Wichita Falls, into Abilene, all the way down into San Angelo 
creeping into the North, North, North Texas area down here into Ardmore. So we could have some discrete supercells try to break out into the later afternoon time frame out in this region and then move across, possibly forming into a squall line as you get deeper into the evening into the overnight hours going through portions of central oklahoma as well as into portions of you know say north texas into central texas so it could be a later evening event you know for that particular for particular area we'll be fine tuning that as far as the timing dynamics because like i mentioned that system is still well offshore right now but what's probably is going to happen is we're going to be seeing that severe weather to the south but to the north of there we're going to be lining up or ahead of this cold front training thunderstorms and we could be looking at from some some flooding in these areas where we could be picking up several inches of rainfall within this area heading into your thursday night into friday morning time frame and that's why they do have excessive risk of heavier rainfall into this area especially from dallas extending into memphis all the way into kansas city and to missouri you know into the missouri valley here into st louis extending all the way up into indianapolis heading into columbus ohio as well so this area right here especially in the yellow shaded area could easily pick up possibly two to four inches of rainfall and i feel like we're going to be having some flood watches to be issued within these areas on ahead of this system because there's the setup on the surface map with those deeper greens those darker greens there there's the boundary with that freezing line to the north and we'll have the snow ahead of it as well and to the south we've got those training thunderstorms so we'll definitely have to be looking at some very heavy rain setting up in this sector as we get into your Tuesday night, Friday morning time frame. But there's the snow. So we're going to have this little system that's coming through northern Minnesota uh, going into Tuesday and Tuesday night. But heading into your Thursday time frame, we do have a little bit of a swath that's going to be coming across portions of Nebraska as well as into Iowa as well. But further south, that same system continues to move. And so on the day on Friday, this could be your most significant day because I think this, by the time this hits, it's going to be a little bit, you know, and more peak heating time frame into the afternoon time frame. And this is already a day, you know, a day five risk because this goes into Friday. So we're looking at some stronger thunderstorms and you know, good amounts of severe. All three modes of severe weather are definitely on the table in a good part of Louisiana, back into Mississippi, and parts of parts of Alabama as well. And that that extends into the Memphis area as well as into the Jackson area as we get deeper portions into Nashville as well as we get into the day on Friday. So we're gonna have to be fine-tuning this setup because this looks to be the most significant day of of the week so there's the setup on the surface map with that heavier rain further to the south most of this is going to be in the form of all three modes of severe weather so we have to be concerned about some tornadoes with this particular system some larger hail and definitely some gustier winds of 60 plus miles an hour within this area as uh, we have that other trough is going to be digging in off the pacific northwest with more rain showers again along the coast and more snow for the mountain regions for them but as we get into your and your saturday time frame going into sunday morning that system will be racing across and there's not much cold air with it because that warm front is going to be continuing to surge all week long so by the time it actually gets into the northeast we're just looking at some mainly the northern areas into vermont and new hampshire as well as into maine where they'll be picking up more heavy snow from this particular system but so after today the warm-up starts to begin so here's after today you're going to be having above average temperatures for a good part of the southern plains the southeast through the ohio valley as well as into the northeast while much of the west much of the intermountain west and the pacific northwest will continue to remain below average all week long going forward and here's your rain so we're going to have that significant system that's going to be coming across into the west coast heavy rains along the west coast into washington and oregon heavier rains pushing back into california especially into central and southern california 
pretty significant rains. That's why they've got the flash flood watches here in Arizona and the four corners regions that extends into portions of Colorado with some heavier precipitation. But then that second storm system, as we're going to be dealing with some more severe storms, and especially the training aspect of these storms, easily this area in red could pick up two to four inches, if not some isolated amounts, even more than that, possibly six through the week. So we have to be concerned about some flash flooding in this sector. Lighter amounts as you extend further south, heading into Florida. And then as this gets up into the Northeast, again, we're not gonna have much cold air to speak of to be working with. It's just gonna be pretty far north up into the higher elevations. And those rain amounts will be a lot less as well, probably on the half inch to an inch variety. But there's your snow, so over the next seven days. So the Intermountain West is gonna, again, gonna be crushed with those below average temperature anomalies especially the Sierra Nevadas adding to those totals another probably two to four feet of snow into the mountain regions out there. And then that storm system will be swinging across. Here's the blend of on the north, north side of that low pressure center all week. So more snow will be adding to those totals in possibly Minneapolis. I think they picked up 81 inches already for the season maybe a couple of more inches for the rest of the week for them. So they'll be creeping up into possibly top five you know, criteria of all time for the snowiest winters on record. And then again, not much cold air to speak of by the time we head into the Northeast. So we're only talking some areas in Vermont, New Hampshire, but yes, definitely some heavier snow amounts as we extend into Maine. So I guys, I appreciate you guys watching. I'll be doing a lot of updates this week on this channel as well as my other channel, uh, Pal Ponder Ultra. So definitely subscribe to that. I'll probably do an update on that channel this afternoon. So catch me the next update. Wire protect you before and after the storm.